This video demonstrates how to design and construct paper models of geodesic domes. Geodesic domes are considered to be the world's strongest, most economical lightweight structure. This dramatic structure represents thousands of years of human innovation. The first dome structures probably appeared in Africa when early humans created domed shelters from natural materials. As these first humans migrated out of Africa, the dome went with them, adapting to every landscape on Earth. With the appearance of civilizations, domes evolved to become places of worship and study, elegant structures that have become the familiar hallmarks of great civilizations. This dome complex is located at the Eden Project in Cornwall, England. It is an exciting example of contemporary dome design. The success of the dome as a structure is a result of the natural integrity of its shape. Domes use the same curved shape that give the arch its strength. The force from a load placed on a dome transfers down the shell of the dome to the base. There are two components to the force. One pushes down, the other pushes out, trying to spread the dome. As with arches, the spreading force can be contained by buttresses. Modern domes are designed to use tension to keep the dome from spreading. We are going to look at a modern dome design that uses tension to hold the dome together. This structure is a geodesic dome, a dome constructed with triangles. I'm going to show you how to design and construct a dome like this. Let's start with the triangles. Our dome will be constructed from paper triangles with folded edges. The folded edges create glue tabs and stiffen the triangle. The three sides of a triangle create a powerful structural unit. Nail three sticks together and you will find that the only way to change the shape of this triangular unit is to break it. The shape of a four-sided structure is easily changed. It does not have the natural strength of a triangle. Look closely at this dome and you will notice that groups of five triangles are joined to create pentagons. Those are the red triangles on this dome. These red triangles are isosceles with two equal sides. The equal sides of the triangles are joined to create a pentagon. The base of each triangle creates the perimeter of the pentagon. This dome has six pentagons. The pentagons are joined together with equilateral triangles with all sides equal. The white triangles in this dome are equilateral. This dome is constructed from 40 triangles, 30 isosceles and 10 equilateral. It is possible to construct domes of any size. We are going to construct a dome with a diameter of 50 centimeters. The size of the triangles used to construct a dome is determined by the diameter of the dome. The sides of the equilateral triangles used to make this dome are each 15.45 centimeters long. I use the letter A to represent this length. The glue tabs extend one centimeter out from each side of the triangle. Note the glue tabs are angled back from the ends. This is to prevent these ends from touching when folded.
The base of each isosceles triangle is equal to A, which is 15.45 centimeters. The two equal sides of the isosceles triangles are each 13.66 centimeters long. I use the letter B to represent this length. The glue tabs extend one centimeter out from each side of the triangle. If you would like to draw triangles to create this dome, pause the video and record these dimensions. The triangles used to assemble geodesic domes like the one we are constructing must be drawn with precision. Here is one technique for drawing triangles. To draw the equilateral triangle for a 50 centimeter dome, I start by drawing a baseline that is longer than 15.45 centimeters. I then set my compass to 15.45 centimeters. You need a large compass for this dimension. Starting at one end of the baseline, I use the compass to make an arc across the line. This establishes the base length. Then I use the compass to create arcs from each end of the baseline. These arcs cross precisely at the vertex of the triangle. Using a ruler, I can finish the triangle by joining the ends of the base to the vertex. Check with a ruler to make sure the sides are 15.45 centimeters long. Use your ruler to draw the glue tabs. They extend one centimeter from each side of the triangle. Remember to angle the ends of the glue tabs back a little bit. To draw the isosceles triangle, First draw the 15.45 cm baseline and then reset the compass to 13.66 cm to find the vertex. If you draw your own triangles, be sure to mark the A and B sides on the glue tabs. This helps when you start assembling. Photocopy enough triangles to make a dome. You need 30 isosceles triangles and 10 equilateral triangles. Any quality of paper will work, but we usually photocopy the isosceles triangles onto a heavyweight colored paper and the equilateral triangles onto a heavyweight white paper. Next step is to cut out the isosceles triangles. If you are doing this with a large group, divide the group into teams of three or four per dome. Once the isosceles triangles are cut out, each one needs to be folded along the edge lines. The folding is an important step. Poorly folded triangles make it difficult to assemble the dome. Remember to cut and fold 10 equilateral triangles. When folding is completed, assemble the isosceles triangles into pentagons. Glue is applied to the B edges of the triangles. We use glue sticks. Align the edges and ends carefully and make sure that the A side of the isosceles triangles is always to the outside of the pentagon, forming the perimeter. You will be assembling six pentagons. Leave the final joint for a few minutes this gives the glue a chance to dry before you pull the structure into its final shape. The center of the pentagon pops up, creating a pentagonal shield. We use paper clamps to hold this last joint while it dries. While the glue is drying, prepare a base for your dome. Any large piece of cardboard will do. 
To create the base for your dome, start with a 56 centimeter square piece of card. This is just Bristol board. You need to find the center of this card, so we'll draw the diagonals. And where they cross is the center of the card. Now, we need to draw some circles here. We actually need three circles. I'm just going to use a, a strip of Bristol board, this yellow piece here, to create a device for drawing circles. I'm going to mark down the center of this card the zero point, 16 centimeters, 25 centimeters. That'll actually define the diameter of the dome, or the circumference of the dome, and 27 centimeters. We need some holes pushed through those marks we've just made. I'm just going to use a push pin to do that with. So that's our zero position there. There's 16 centimeters there, 25 there, and 27 there. I'm going to wiggle them to make them a little bit bigger so I can get a pencil through these end ones. All we're going to do is Pin the zero mark to the center of our card, so just push a push pin through there and then through the center down here. Make sure that's well secured. And here's our first circle. This first circle, we're going to be cutting this out. It gives us access to the inside of the dome. This next circle defines the circumference of the dome, its perimeter. And this last one, we're just going to cut to this size to reduce the overall size of the base. So there's our, our three circles that give us all the information we need. And we have to establish the positions for the base of each triangle that's going to go around the perimeter. To do that, set a compass to 15.45 centimeters. That's the actual uh, size of the base of each triangle that's going to be sitting on there, 15.45. Then, pick a spot to start and make a little uh, mark across the perimeter. Move up to that mark, put the point of the compass in, again and just continue all the way around like this until you've finished. Once you've completed uh, marking out those distances, take a ruler, straight edge, and join those points. Cut around the inside circle, removing the center. Cut around the outside circle, reducing the size of the base. And to make your base a little more rigid, you can thumb tack the Bristol board to a heavier card bottom. This is cardboard on the bottom here. And if you run a half a dozen thumb tacks around the outside, just to hold the Bristol board down, makes it a little easier to start your construction. Now that the base is ready, we can start assembling the dome. Glue an equilateral triangle to one edge of a pentagon. You can use small paper clamps to hold these two units together. Put glue along the inside of two of the lines on the base. 
fit the unit onto the base so that the outside edge fits along the lines and the glue tabs push into the glue. Use thumbtacks to hold the glue tabs in place. Repeat this process all the way around the base, gluing the new units into place, both on the base and on the adjoining glue tabs. Make sure all of the tabs have enough glue to hold the units together. Use paper clamps to secure the tabs until the glue dries. When the last five equilateral triangles are in place, all that is left to be closed in is the five-sided opening on top, the last pentagon. The opening in the base gives access to the interior of the dome. Use this opening to clamp the last pentagon in place. A bead of liquid glue around the bottom helps to secure the dome to the base. When the glue has dried, remove all the clamps and tacks. Your dome is completed. Domes of any size can be constructed. You just need to determine the dimensions of the triangles. This is the formula for determining the lengths A and B. A represents the length of the sides of the equilateral triangle, and A also represents the base of the isosceles triangle. B represents the length of the sides of the isosceles triangle. Note that the formula uses the radius of the dome, one half of the dome's diameter. More science and technology videos are available at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.